Hey, okay, I'm going to teach you something really cool about music. This is being able to solo over the Dorian mode. The Dorian mode, ooh, wow, Dorian mode, ooh, what does that mean? Oh, all it is, is just the second note of the major scale. You play off the second note of the major scale, that's it. Not anything really complicated. No amazing theory, ooh, I, ooh, theory, I don't do theory, or I'm really into theory. Either way, it's the second note of the major scale. So you take like, let's say, A major. Get that really tight, nice and even. You play from the second note of the A major, which would be a letter after A, B. Here it is. And then, it's a little bit easier to play the B Dorian from here. Here's your B note, right? E, F, G, A, B, 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 right? So let's do the A major scale from there. Right? That's your A major scale here. Here's a B minor chord. And then let's do from the second note of the A major scale from the second position. Now, here's the really cool part. All those notes, you play those notes, plus throw in the blues scale notes, you know, You can throw in this one. You can throw in this one. Right? You can throw in this one. Right? And uh, you can probably throw in this one. Even though it's not in the scale. It's really suggesting the harmonic minor, but you can throw it in there and you take all those notes and you either start or end with a B note. That's simple. So watch this. Right? That's just B pentatonic. Or you can throw in the second note. Or the six. Here's the six right here. Or you could throw in, uh, let's say this note, right? They all sound cool because they start and end with the note that matches the chord. Now you could throw in, you could start on the third. So watch this, here's the third, right? And you just end on the B. You could start on the B and end on the third. Or you could start with hmm, the five. Yeah, you could start with the five and end on the one. Throw in an octave there. Or how about this? You could start on the two and end on the one. I mean the two of the mode. One, two. There it is. And, hmm, let's see what else we got. We use the two, we use the six, we use the five, we use the flat five note. Um, you could start with the sharp one. You could, hmm, what else have we got? Well, we have a, a sharp five note. Basically, you can start with any note in the scale, or a little bit outside of the scale, and end on the one. Even the four, which is kind of a note you don't really want to hit from the scale, because that's saying we're actually on a different chord. You know? Uh, hmm, what else? What else do we got? We used a one, 
we use the 2, we use the 3, we use the 4, 5, 6, oh, the 7. 7, yeah, here it is. So the rule is, start on any note, end on the one. Nobody told you this. Well, I told you, so start doing it and you have some cool ideas. And literally millions and millions of ideas. And they're almost always going to be original because, you know, you multiply out, you know, eight notes. More like ten notes that I threw in there. Ten times nine times eight times seven times six. And that's only if you're playing one note each. If you do, uh, if you repeat notes, then all of a sudden you get ten times ten times ten times the number of notes that you played and you literally get like millions of combinations. Next, next is you can end on the three. So watch this. It still works, see it sounds right because there is a three in the chord. I'm not too big on ending on the five, though it can work. You can end on the five. So, right? Those are your fives. It works. I don't do it as often because it kind of suggests that you're already on this. What else? Well, you could probably end on the two. Right here, the two of the mode. It'll sort of work, so you could, why not, take a step further and now you're in the six. See, we're going around in circle fifths here. Further you get away from the one, here's the one, here's the five, here's the two, here's the six. Further you get away, the less it sounds right to end there, so. Right? Uh, next would be the three. However, now you have landed by circle fifths onto some major six, the major three, so. Off of that, you use a major three. It's going to be a little bit more dissonant, but it still will work. A major three over a minor chord sounds cool. It is a little bit more dissonant. Well, what's after three? Remember that note I said earlier? You can take the the major seven. Because this, this note right here, it's a little bit more dissonant, but you could end there. Why not? It'll still sound cool. So where do you go from there? Got that flat five or sharp four? Still can do that. Okay, let's go next fifth. That's your sharp one. Will work too. It's a little bit more dissonant. So the question is just how dissonant do you want your phrase to sound? You can end pretty much on any of those notes, and it'll work. Some Somebody's ear will go, oh, that's so dissonant, I can't deal, I don't like that phrase. Other ear might go, oh, they're just. it just depends how open you are to dissonance in the phrasing. That's it. And uh, so I would, uh, so that's one thing. The next thing would be to get your notes uh, clean in the beat. So everybody's always like, I gotta get my sixteenths, I gotta get my eights, I gotta get my triplets, you know. 
and you want to get your eights. Right? You want to get your eights, you know? And triplets, your sixteenths, right? How do you get there? Well, you get the quarter notes and the half notes and even the whole notes, right? That's eight. That's eights. You want to work first, go take a step back and get the quarter notes straight and get them to sound groovy. And you, there's more time between them, so you have less of like an idea of like where the note is. So they're harder in a certain way, but easier in that you have more time to like figure out where it is. So it tricks you because you have more time, you get tripped into thinking you have more time, and, but yet there is no thing spacing it out to show you where it is as much. So that's why it's harder. This is where you might want to use a, a metronome. There's nothing wrong with training wheels when you're learning to ride a bike. Get riding and get your balance first, then take them off. Put the metronome in. But go back to quarter notes, half notes, and whole notes. Go all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom. Mistakes are okay. Mistakes are fine. Go ahead, make mistakes. If you do it 10 times and you make a mistake on the second time or your first time, and that causes you to stop, then you didn't get to 10 times. But if you're okay with the making of mistakes, you make mistakes, you play it 10 times, well, you'll notice that by the time you get to the 10th time, you're making less mistakes. If you're making more mistakes, great. That means you're a natural and you only have to practice it once or twice until you start making more mistakes and then you can stop. Either way, whichever works. And then take that, and then you take that mistake and you do uh, the next time you do it tomorrow or in an hour, you just gotta space it out. You gotta give your brain cells a chance to grow. And so you space it out, you do it in an hour, you do it in another hour. You really don't even have to spend that much time. Actually spend like five minutes practicing the scale, stop, do something else, play guitar, watch a movie, do whatever else, and then come back and do it an hour later. You know, um, I like to think of like dream time. You dream for an hour and a half per dream, right? So something like that, about an hour or so, hour and a half, two hours, you come back and you practice it again. And it's that simple. Uh, so you get, I just did whole notes. Then once you, don't bother with the half notes until you have the whole notes nice and even and warm feeling and could sync up with a drummer or some sort of percussionist with the metronome, syncing up with that. Set the metronome really slow or set it to a normal speed and don't play every single click so you can hit those whole notes. Like you set it to mm, something like 120 and you hit every fourth click. Or you set it to 60 and you hit every two clicks to get your whole note. Uh, either way it works. You set it to 30 if it, your metronome goes that low and then play every one click. Then once it's tight, do not do any half notes at all until your whole notes are spot on. So you do that, you have your whole notes, then one, two, right, all the way up, all the way back down, okay with mistakes, you do it like a bunch of times, you know, noticing progression. Once you start feeling uh, a lot of boredom, a little bit of boredom is okay, but once it starts feeling like, uh, I keep having to do this over and over. That's actually your mind telling you to stop. So you keep it fresh. So you don't want to overdo it. And you don't want to underdo it. You want to do it just enough so it start, start getting that like, uh, I've done it way too many times. Uh, before that, when it's starting to feel like that, that's when you really want to stop and come back to it fresh so it feels exciting and like, oh, I can't wait to play again. So then, once the half notes are really tight, then the quarter notes. Once the quarter notes are really tight. Mm -hmm. 
then the eighths. Then the triples. Well, I'm sorry, I did, I did that a little sloppy. Sloppiness is okay. I, whatever. The, when you're playing with people, you're not going to be playing the notes. By sloppy, I don't mean out of time. I just mean you didn't intend to hit those certain notes. You hit something else by accident. You skipped a note. But if you can keep the flow going, that's what matters. That's what I mean. It's cool to be sloppy, actually, because that's how you come up with new ideas. Then you do your sixteenths, and so on. And then it'll open up to you. But don't bother with the harder stuff until you got the first one right, and the second step right, and so on. Next, what I would do is uh, you would want to work on chords. So you have a chord. Right? Here's your B minor chord. Same shape as the A minor chord. Same shape as the G minor chord. E minor chord. Right? So, you have your E minor, you have your G, you have your C, you have your D, and you have your A minor. Those are the most common chords in the key of G. So let's work on that one. Everybody likes the key of G. They like learning the G chord and the C chord and the D chord, A minor chord and E minor chord. The G, people call that the one. Next. A minor is your two chord. C is your four chord. D is your five chord. E minor is your six chord. You can, you can uh, write a bunch of songs with that or learn a bunch of songs uh, that are going to be in the key of G. Or they may call it the key of E minor, but it's just the chords rearranged. It's still starting with E minor instead. Okay, so, right, uh, that uh, Dorian scale I told you about, that would be A minor. Uh, if you're in the key of G. Okay, so chords. How do you get it? So you're taking your chord. Let's see your, say your chord progression is like A minor to D and back to A minor. Well, what you can do is you can take each finger and learn it by itself and then pair it up with other fingers. So for A minor, the first note, I mean the first finger is here. And then where does it go on the D? It goes right here. So what you could do is just, it's not going to sound the same, but you could just play with just that one finger and just move them and practice getting them in time. Playing quarter notes. How about let's do whole notes. You know, there's a little bit of time gap in my movement. So um, what I could do is I could try to get it so it's like right exact to it. Or there can be a little bit of a gap where you're not actually, fingers not on the string, uh, right all the way up to the next chord. So it could be where you're hopping a little bit. And so there's a little bit of air time with the fingers. That's okay. Both it depends on what you're trying to sound you're trying to have. You're trying to have a sound where the chord's always there, or you're trying to have a sound where there's some muting, some resting. That's okay. So first finger, right? Here. And then here. Right? The next finger, where does it go? So with the A minor. And then it goes here. So then the third finger. 
the third finger is here on the A minor chord. Okay, so now you want to start pairing. So first, you're going to do first and second, then you're going to do first and third, then you're going to do a second and third, and those are your three combinations. You pair them up twos and twos before you do all three together. So take that first and second fingers, and you do. Then you pair the first and third. Then you pair the second and third. Then you take them all together. That simple. And some chords have the pinky in it. Some chords don't use the first, second, or third fingers. No third finger on the G, unless you do this G. They both work. By the way, that's the five of the G. Right? That's your uh, D note. And this note is your third. That's a B note. Like, G chord is built out of the first, third, and fifth. So now that you have an A minor, right? And solo over the A minor. And then D. And solo. Same notes. You're just starting with the D. And ending on the D. So it's the same concept with soloing over that D chord, right? As you soloed over the, the, the Dorian, right? We did it in B before, but now we're in A, so let's stick with A now. Same, remember you were doing the, uh, the, uh, the three, you're ending and beginning on the three, you're ending and beginning on the one. You can end on the, or begin on the five, you can begin on the two and the six, on the major seven, and so on just using that circle of fifths to tell you which notes are okay. A little bit more dissonant, the more down the fifths you go. And so, same concept with the D. It is the D mixolydian. But since you're in this position, you're gonna play it off of this note. This is your D note. So you start and end with the D, and notes that are circle of fifths from there. So. So there you go. And then it works for all the chords. It's the same exact concept. And that's pretty much well, everything I know in a nutshell. <laughs> And it's just uh, being able to build ideas with those notes, but it, uh, it'll open it up to everything that you don't know that you can create in the moment into something that now you know once you've done it once or twice. Um, and you'll be a lot more free to uh, play spontaneously and, you know, you'd sit there and memorize something and it'll, 
you know, sound memorized. Or well, it'll probably sound pretty cool if it's a cool idea. Um, but if you want to be free to be able to play whatever you want and have a completely open space, then uh, this method will work great. Um, thanks for listening.